Hey guys, what's happening? Look who just came in. I've actually been on these for one of these for a while now. And uh, let me turn this down. Actually, I actually just picked up this thing right here in another video. This Road Talker 40. I'm not sure I'm going to keep that one, but it's crazy clean. Got it for 40 bucks to offer up. Crazy deal. Those things are so rare, you never see those things. Alright, so this video is about this Palomar watt meter. Um, paid 30 bucks on eBay for this thing. Um, it's getting some work. It's pretty dusty. But I love how big it is. Let's take a look. It's gonna actually, it's gonna go right here on my workbench. I mean, it's not the best meter, but I just like how big it is. It's gonna go with my Palomar TX100 linear amp that I just restored. Actually, I've, I think I've uploaded one video. I have two more to upload. Yeah, it's it's fully functional, um, working. But I want to do the same thing. I just want to go through this, clean it all up. The switches, some of the switches seem like they're kind of sticky. Use my deoxit, <laughs> clean up the switches, the pots and uh, make sure everything works. I'm going to clean this thing up here. It's a little foggy. Um, yeah, so it was $30 shipping. Yeah, so it looks like I have a couple four four screws here. Connectors look pretty dirty. So I'm going to take the case cover off and I'm probably, I'll see if the alcohol, like some of the older stuff doesn't do very well with alcohol. It leaves like a residue, so I'm not going to even paint, bother to paint the cover. What I'm going to do is I'm going to thoroughly clean it. Then I'm going to go back and, and uh, Wipe it down with like silicone, like silicone spray, it will really make this thing shine. You guys are subscribed to my channel for 3D printers. I'm still doing my 3D printer stuff. I just haven't uploaded videos, so I've done some ultra high speed tests with the Celeritas, doing some mods to the Orsinus, and then I also did that. I think I, think I uploaded all the videos for this one, the KD Tech, the ABS conversion printer, you know, clipper conversion, and then I just got that. I did a video about that one. Um, which the, the, the print quality in that one is incredible. All right, so um, it's a quarter inch. Get those screws off, but it's hard to even get in there. So I get those off. All right, there's a case cover off. So I'm looking at the board. All right, so I see ceramic caps. Um, all right, it's pretty clean inside. I mean, it's pretty, pretty basic, but I, I think I'm obviously going to replace this cap right here. And what's funny is I actually just bought. I do actually have some from Nichicon. I just bought the 47U. Huh, oh, what a coincidence. I have the 35 volt ones. Um, all right, I'll replace that. So let me, it's in my cap drawer somewhere. There is cap drawer, here we go. Uh, Nichicon, 47U. Yeah, I, I was making a comment in the last video about how much smaller are these ones, even though they have the same exact, uh, you know, same rating, just newer technology, I guess. Um, even though these are actually rated at 35 volts, and these are 25 volts. So, all right, so I'm going to replace the cap and clean up. I'm going to go soak the case and uh, be back. Actually, before I even do that, like the switches are really, I mean, they're sticky. So, like this one's really sticky. So I'm going to go down there, spray a little deoxid in it. Yeah, I love how big this meter is. Even though it's, it's like a fill box, I even see some guy that he... He calls it the X-Bones, but you can do like this, the, the, the meter swing. That's an AM monitor, which I'm probably never going to use. So I'm going to go back. Yeah, I already just, this stuff's incredible, the deoxid. So, a little bit more in there. I'll do the same thing for the pots down here, if I can get in there. Different, okay, that's the best access. I'm trying to figure out what is the best access to get to it. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll do better. Okay, I do the same thing with this one. Okay, this one's not, this is just a switch. So, same thing, deoxid. Each one of those little pads. Okay, then I'll go back. Actually, it looks like there's a. I don't. I guess it is a electrical contact. I guess. Get them on there. So I'm clean those contacts. All right. So I'm gonna go back, clean the case off. Okay. Actually, that looks pretty clean in there. Um, it, you couldn't tell because the, the the stuff is a little bit yellowed just slightly, but that looks super clean. I'm gonna go down, rub the whole face down, and then I gotta make sure I don't touch that white face. 
Um, I mean, I guess I could use my buffer and like really polish this thing out if I, if I I'll try it like a test piece, but first I'm gonna clean it because it's sort of dusty. Yeah, I forgot to show you guys my uh, CV mounts here. You probably won't be able to see it. Look at that on it. Maybe you can see it better, yeah. See, I'm actually gonna have singles. These, these are doubles and I have triples and quads. So you guys are like in a radius collector or whatever. You can actually stack multiple radios on top of each other in those little knobs. Use M5 screws. Like most of the, the all the stuff that I've dealt with so far have been M5 screws. So all the, even like this old Grant was M5. So most of the stuff is actually using M5. If it was made in the USA, it might be like something smaller, a quarter inch or something, maybe. Not sure. Okay, so to clean the SO239, I just grabbed a little rubbing alcohol, Q-tip. I let it soak the threads, and I come back with a wire brush and just get all the dust off. Then I'll go back and I'll try to get in there as much as I can without spreading those pins, and then I'll hit it with deoxid. All right, so here's a closer look at the different size difference. So what I was reading online because this first made me nervous when I first saw this, and I guess these are sort of hollow. That's why there's so much difference. All right, got the cap replaced. And I'm just wiping down the uh, face with uh, some silicone. Um, actually, good look with the silicone on old paint. So I'm gonna probably put a couple coats on it, rub it down a couple times. It was like a, it was like sort of like an oxidized layer on the front of it. So I'm trying to get that off of there. Um, I'm waiting for the case cover to dry and put the deoxid on the back pins. You know, worked in a pin a couple times, in and out. So. Alright, I'm gonna grab the case cover, we'll put it back together. You know, this stuff usually dries on its own. Actually, I learned this trick from my RC cars. I'd use the silicone to clean the plastic up, to reshine the plastic after you clean it. And that'd give it that plastic that nice shine. So let it soak up until it dries, and then uh, be back. Alright, so just for fun, let's just see what this cap is showing. It should be 47 microfarad. 61. again. So it's supposed to be 47 and it's showing up at 61. Hmm. Yeah, that's way off. Like That's not even slightly off, that's like way off. Yeah, internal ESR 52 ohms or 0.52 ohms, half an ohm. Alright, that's pretty good. Let it soak overnight. So the silicone wasn't really doing the trick on this thing, so I just wiped it down with some WD-40. Plus, I mean, that's probably gonna help out because it's, you know, water displacement. I mean, I live here at the beach, so this thing's gonna be pretty much in the rust or the salt water air, so. Um, all right, let's fire this thing out for the first time. Let's see if it works. Switches feel but way better. Um, um, all right, so I need to be in reverse for power power. Alright, so, alright, we'll do some tests with this CB right here, and all right, see if it works. Alright, so I put this other meter in front of it so you can kind of grasp the size of this thing. Um, yeah, because in the video you really can't see how, like the other YouTube videos I've seen, you can't really see how big this thing is. That's kind of why I like it, you know, it looks, it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's almost exactly the same. I mean, it's basically just a bigger version of an SWR. So the only difference is it can just handle more wattage. But it does exactly the same thing. I mean, there's not a lot of features on it. So, like, it has new peak power. So, um, I might, some guy does actually make a kit called the X-Bones kit, um, which can do, like, peak power. But it's, he never really went into production with it. But I'd like to at least get the schematic. Maybe, maybe I'd make my own board or something. All right, so let's fire this thing up. Uh, put this in AM mode. Let's see what happens. All right, key up. I should put this in the 10 watt scale. Um, all right. So the uh, 10 watt scale is this uh, the one right here. It's the middle one right there. So about I'm guessing about one and a half. Well, one watt, dead key. All right, audio, audio. All right, I mean, I'm not expecting much. 
Um, all right, let's try the 1000 watt scale linear amp on. I don't know. That's, I mean, 200 watts. Well, guess what it is? I mean, that's accurate. Accurate. I mean, you don't know. I don't have a scale that I can actually go that high to even compare it. So, all right, so that's it for this video. Um, pretty cool meter. I like the way it looks. That old, like, old style look, you know? Um, this is, I mean, I didn't see any other videos that actually showed really the insides of this meter. Um, so, hopefully, this will help if you have this meter. Um, yeah, so I did just sort of replace a capacitor on it, you know? and. Nothing looked burnt, nothing looked good, and seems to be working, so... Alright, awesome.